In this session, we will cover ALM Octane synchronization process. ALM Octane is connected to ALM and QC.NET uh, via an ALM uh, synchronizer service. The service should be deployed in a different machine, uh, and there is an option to have this uh, configuration both on-prem and SAS. The links that you can uh, configure are defect entity, backlog entity, which reside in epic feature and user story, and also releases. In this session, we will cover uh, a live demo showing how to configure those links and how the end results looks both in ALMQC and both in ALM Octane. The demo flow will focus on the defect link. We'll show you how to map fields, how to map specific values, um, and to have different settings of the user mapping. There's also all kinds of synchronization rules that we'll be showing you in the demo. After the integrity check, you'll be able to activate this link on a manual way or in a permanent way, resulting in an automatic data flow between the two endpoints. We will also show you a um, specific uh, configuration for the requirement backlog link and also the release link. I hope you will enjoy the session and find it useful. To open the synchronizer UI, um, you should be allowed with a special permission uh, to configure the links. Once you have the right permission, going from the cog, there's a synchronizer link, click it, and you'll be in the right UI of configuring the links. You can see that the bridge was already configured. Usually when you start opening the um, UI for the first time, you'll have to uh, download the bridge, install it, and to have initial configuration. We will skip this uh, installation process, but once done, you'll get all those green fees uh, marked, which mean the bridge is ready for configuration and synchronization. In this screen is the area we're adding new links. We will start by creating a link for a defect. This link shows you a wizard, which starts with a few basic uh, configuration in order to put the endpoints information and also um, advice on some rules and favorites. The first thing we have to write is link name. To define the workspace in LM Octane, which will be synchronized, and if you'd like a description. The other endpoint is the ALM or QC.NET endpoint. In this configuration, you have to insert the server URL, a name for this endpoint, and as a user that will be uh, the synchronizer endpoint. Also define a domain and a project after you authenticate with the server. This means that the synchronization is between an ALM project and an ALM Octane workspace. Once the configuration is validated, we can continue to the rules definition and favorites. There's also an option uh, to actually synchronize just a favorite, uh, both in ALM Octane and ALM QC, and therefore reduce the amount of entity um, that we are synchronizer. In this demo, we will keep it generalized for all the entities. There's also an option to manage um, the defect direction. If you choose the first option, ALM Octane, it means that all of your creation and editing of the entities are being done only from ALM Octane and then updated to ALM uh, QC as a read only. Second option is exactly the opposite. It means that editing and creation is only done in ALM QC.net and are being reflected in ALM Octane. Um, and this is one direction only. So the first option and the second option is one direction only. The third one allows you to actually do it from both places, hence a bidirectional sync. And this is the option we'll choose. The last item is just a summary of the configuration. Um, and once you finish the wizard process, we are going to the state of um, actually configuring uh, the mapping rules between the fields. Let's do that right now. So the link was added successfully. As you can see, it's disabled. Uh, and we'll create now um, some rules and some field mapping before we uh, create the first manual sync of the entities. We'll start by going to the Rules tab. In the Rules tab, 
As you can see, we also chose the third option, which shows us a bidirectional sync. And here, we give you a more granular settings for the creation of entities, for their update, and for their deletions from both endpoints. For example, if you look at ALM Octane uh, creation of a defect, you can either say create a correspondent entity in ALM.NET once this option is clicked. As you can see, there's a bidirectional error there or do nothing. So you do have a more granular um, way to control the direction, both from creation, update, and deletion. But by default, with the first initialization of the link, since we have set a bidirectional, those are the initial configuration, you don't have to change them. So now let's go to the field mapping. In the field mapping, you're first presented with the default set of the system field, mapping ALM Octane field with uh, ALM.NET uh, or QC fields. You can also now add user-defined fields based on your project and also have this additional mapping. Let's look, for example, at the severity link. So looking at the severity link, you can see that this is a single value item. It has read-write permission in ALM Octane, and this is a mandatory field. The direction is by default set to be bidirectional sync, and you can change that. And the next field in ALM QC is, again, the severity link. And you can, of course, change that and decide to have a different field to map there. Same information in ALMQC.net. Um, it's a single value. It's a read-write option. And it's a mandatory field. More granular uh, configuration can be done on the right pane uh, when opening the values. Expanding this pane will show you all the values of this specific field where you can map, for example, the value to the matching value uh, in the other endpoint. Again, let's take, for example, low severity. So low severity is mapped to low, and it's a bidirectional link. But you can decide on the right hand to actually send all of the ALMQC low into uh, a different value. There's also an option to control the users and their user mapping between the two endpoints in case they're different. By clicking the Add Users dialog in the More Actions, this dialog will allow you to uh, select specific end user uh, in ALM Octane and to connect it to ALM QC users. Once you don't find a user in one of the endpoints, you can actually connect a user to an existing user in the other endpoints. This allows you to have the flexibility um, of connecting specific users in one system with other users in a different system in case they don't exist. There's also an option, as you can see on the top, to define a default user. Hence, all the users that are not defined in a specific system will be mapped automatically to a different user, which was configured in the other endpoint system. So now we have finished the configuration. You can explore the different values um, and make the same uh, changes as I just showed you for the severity entity, for example. Uh, once you feel you're ready, uh, you can save the link, cross your fingers, and have the validation checks to see that indeed the link is working and there are no conflicts. Once the link is configured, there's a need to run the integrity check to make sure that all the settings are um, mapped properly. A simulation or a manual sync or an automatic sync can be run. So this is a mandatory step in order to validate that everything uh, is working properly. The information can be viewed either in a report or in log files. Once the integrity check has passed, we have a few options. The first option is to run a simulation. A simulation is actually telling you what entities are going to be copied or updated or created once either a manual sync is chosen or an automatic one. A manual sync is just a one-time sync of real data between the endpoints. An automatic sync will have a regular cadence to sync uh, the two endpoints. In this example, choose a single manual sync between the endpoints. The manual sync is now running. As you can see, it's copying the entities, updating them. And in the end, we'll get a report and a log to explore the results. Let's view the report to see the results of the synchronization. You can see that we have created four entities in ALM Octane and nothing was updated in ALM QC. Let's see now the results both in ALM QC.net 
and both in ALM Octane. So here's the UI of ALM QC. As you saw in the report, those four defects existed here and we created them in ALM Octane, meaning they were missing there. No changes were done here based on the report. Moving to ALM Octane, you can see that those four defects were created with exact the same um, values as they existed in ALM QC. We'll now show you the bidirectional sync. So those entities were created in ALM.NET and synchronized into ALM Octane. Now let's change the severity of one of the defects from ALM Octane and see how those changes are synced back to ALM QC. Another manual sync was run. Of course, if you're on the automation uh, configuration, this is being done periodically, but we've now created another manual run and let's say the results back in LMQC. So let's refresh the UI and you can see that the first defect, its severity changed, but not to critical, to urgent, because we mapped critical in LM Octane into urgent in LMQC. And this is the value that was updated. Let's recreate now a requirement backlog link. We'll choose the entity type of requirement and in the same way define the name, a workspace, and an ALM QC project. In case you already configured uh, an ALM QC endpoint, you can choose an existing connection and therefore all the information will be filled from the previous data entries. When configuring the mapping, in ALM Octane you have an epic, a feature, and a user story. In ALM QC, there's various subtypes for requirement. In this dialog, you can choose which one to map. In our case, let's map an epic to a business, a feature to a functional, and user story to a user story. But this is a customized uh, requirement type that we have created. From ALM QC, you can actually choose few types to map to a feature or a user story or to an epic. So for example, in our case, let's also choose group uh, subtypes requirements in ALM and testing to all be mapped to features. The other way around, since there are only a single entity of epic, feature, and user story, we have to choose one of the subtypes in ALM Octane. So in our case, it's functional type uh, for a feature and a user story type for a user story. The last column is the bidirectional uh, path. So same as we have explained in the beginning, the default that we chose is both endpoints will be um, overwritten and updated, but you can also choose one direction. Either ALM Octane is updating QC or ALM QC is updating ALM Octane. We will keep it as a bidirectional link. Next in the rules, similar to the defects, you can choose a favorite. So you can filter the epics, features, and user stories. And you can also choose an alternative route to start in ALM QC and not synchronize the entire tree, but start from a subtree. So here's the data structure in ALM QC. You can see we have the root of requirements. We created, just for this demo, two epics, features, and user stories. And soon we'll show you how this exact uh, same data structure is being um, viewed in ALM Octane. Here's our system, the same system of ALM Octane. Let's refresh the view to see the results after synchronization from ALM QC. Here are two epics, and we can open them to see that a single feature was created for epic 02, and two features were created to epic 01. Refreshing the stories also adds user stories together with those defects, presenting in the exact same way. Now we have a backlog in ALM Octane, but we would like to start planning it for releases and cycles. Let's open the assignment area in ALM Octane. You can see that it's empty. We haven't synchronized any releases or sprints. Let's do that now, and again, bring the data from ALM QC. Let's add now a releases link and review the configuration for that link. We're choosing the entity type of releases, and same as before, choosing an existing ALM QC connection to the same project. The first settings are the one we already reviewed. 
either it's a one direction or a bidirectional sync. By default, we only synchronize current and future releases, but the administrator can choose to also synchronize past releases and state a date to synchronize those releases from. The other option allows you to match between releases that already exist with the same names in the two endpoint, hence informing the link not to recreate those uh, releases with identical names. Let's go and see the releases data in ALMQC. As you can see, we have three releases and few sprints configured for each of those releases. Let's see the same data in LM Octane. So sync was completed. Let's now see those releases in LM Octane. We can add them as buckets to the right pan of planning. And once those releases are here, we can drag and drop user stories or features and plan them to the different releases. We can also now choose to filter by a specific release, let's say, for example, the November release, and see all the information as existed in ALM, the sprints, the value, start date, and end date. This concludes the live demo of um, synchronizing ALMQC.net with ALM Octane. In this uh, demo, we showed you how to synchronize and configure endpoints of defect, requirement backlog, and releases in a bidirectional way between the two endpoints. I hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you.